Yes, Aaron, I, I got to ask you, before the ruling on Roe, you saw men outpacing women when it came to voter registration. Now, the New York Times shows an uptick. Women registering in these 10 states since the decision, they make up 55 percent of newly registered voters in those states. Aaron, I know you are not the data guy, you are the communications guy, but what are the voting trends you're noticing the closer and closer we get to midterms? That data is totally consistent with what we see in the battleground states. So in a normal election year, the voter registration would run evenly between men and women. After the Dobbs decision, we see a spike in voter registration for women. And that happens in the battleground states because people have agency. They know that their vote is going to make a difference. They engage with the electoral system. They get registered. They get ready to vote. In Kansas, that spike was even bigger. That was 70 percent because they had an anti-abortion ballot initiative that they needed to strike down. The important thing, too, is is we also looked at it and, you know, are, are these Democratic women or these Republican women? It's largely Democratic voters who are contributing to this surge, including Democratic women and Democratic men. So th it. there is backlash here. Yeah, Christina, Blake Masters, the Trump-backed Senate candidate in Arizona, recently scrubbed tough abortion restrictions from his website's policy page. Here is what Congressman Adam Kinzinger had to say about that. Take a listen. Somehow in the Republican Party, the crueler you, crueler you are, the more likely you are to win a primary. So Blake Masters, for instance, can erase his website all he wants and now pretend like he's some soft on, on the sky. Yeah. But he isn't because he used it to win a primary. I mean, Christine, I think if there's something we know about voters, it's that they, they want to know what you stand for. They want you to be clear about that and they want you to be consistent. So how is this going to land, this about face? How is it going to land with voters? Yeah, I mean, I don't think voters are forgetting that Republicans are the ones that for years and years have been trying to outlaw and ban abortion. And now voters see just how extreme it is. You know, we help mobilize young voters. And similarly, we're seeing across states a surge in voter registration, especially of young Democratic women. And they are repulsed by what the Republican Party is trying to do to take away rights that they've experienced their whole lives. And I think Republicans should be scared because two in three young voters have told us from the recent polling we did that they believe abortion is on the ballot this election. And from the New York Times to Harvard's youth voter poll, it's showing that we're expecting a youth voter turnout on par with what we saw in 2018, which helped deliver the House for Democrats and elect a slew of progressive candidates. Young people, women, it's very clear that they know which party is trying to outlaw and take our country backwards, trying to take away fundamental rights and freedoms, and that this is just the opening salvo, that they are coming not just for abortion, but they are coming for gay marriage and contraception. Yeah, Aaron, we saw Biden and his White House coming in hot this week on two fronts. You had the White House calling out Republican lawmakers who are criticizing President Biden's student loan relief plan, but who had their own PPP loans forgiven, and you had Biden accusing the GOP of semi-fascism and saying he cannot work with MAGA Republicans who embrace political violence. What do you make of this sort of shift in rhetorical strategy here? It's a much sharper, more participatory way to communicate about the Democratic agenda. And that viral White House thread, 280,000 people retweeted that. It generated a lot of mainstream media coverage. So it's the sort of modern, aggressive messaging campaign that really takes it to Republicans, forces them to communicate on your turf and respond to you on the issues. And student debt relief is a winning issue for working families, for middle class families. Republican counter messaging has just been really pathetic and out of touch. Uh, all they have is like Ted Cruz makes fun of people who make coffee. They talk about people who get degrees in underwater basket weaving. I don't know anybody who's gotten a degree in underwater basket weaving. Uh, it doesn't resonate as much as the real world impact of these policies. Uh, and to the degree that this messaging provokes Republicans, it gets them to talk in our frame.